All right, so this is uh, the first uh, discussion and in introduction to operations research. And so um, I guess we should start off with a few definitions here. So operations research, whoops, I'm in red already. All right, so operations research um, from our book's definition is a scientific approach to decision making that seeks to best design and operate a system, usually under conditions required, uh, requiring the allocation of uh, scarce resources. So what does that typically mean? That means that we're trying to uh, optimize something. Typically it's going to be profit, but it could be uh, you're trying to minimize cost, for example. Uh, and the reason we're trying to minimize the cost is that we only have, or maximize profit, is that we only have a finite number of resources to use. And so, um, you know, thinking about it, uh, if we had an infinite number of resources or an infinite amount of resources, we could just build as much as we wanted to. But usually there's some kind of restriction. And so, because there is a restriction, um, there's going to be some kind of limit to how much we can build. <clears throat> and so the idea here is that we want to be able to allocate um, allocate scarce resources in some kind of uh, systematic way. Uh, maybe say in a systematic way. In order to optimize uh, some quantity. Okay, and so uh, once we say we're going to optimize a quantity, <clears throat> we're right back into calculus, right? Uh, because how do we optimize the function? So calculus, if we optimize uh, y equals f of x, for example, <coughs> excuse me, there are two ways to do that. Um, one is if we have, no, uh, let's say, a closed and bounded domain. And number two, the second part, or the second way we might have to do that is if the domain is not either closed or bounded, or neither. Okay, so <clears throat> in the case of the closed or bounded domain, the extreme value theorem says that if f is continuous, then we attain our global max and global min. And so in that case, uh, do you remember how to find the maximum and minimum? We have to check endpoints, critical points, right? And then we typically would build a table, right, with our critical points and endpoints over here and our y values over there, and we would just find the maximum and minimum. Okay, if the domain is not closed or bounded, <coughs> the primary issue is that we may not have a global max or min. And so in that case, uh, that's a little bit harder to solve. And so we're going to find that we're going to be in this area or this situation where we do have a closed and bounded, uh, well at least it'll be closed. Sometimes it'll be bounded, sometimes it won't. But at least the, by the way, closed means that uh, the domain includes its boundary points. So for example, if I have a set in two dimensions that looks like this, this set <coughs> would include the boundary and so this is a closed closed set and then this set <coughs> if I don't include some of the boundary points right then it's not closed okay uh, of course in in one dimension if you only have one variable then uh, closed means that you have a an interval that includes the endpoints so include endpoints. Okay, I've gotten a little bit off on a tangent here. We're going to talk about this more later. 
But let's uh, go right into a modeling problem. So how about if we, I'm going to pause this maybe for a minute and write down the problem so you don't have to watch me while I do it. And then we'll talk about how to solve it. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I think I've got this written up now. Let's take a look. So the problem is we have a company called the Windor Glass Company. Oh, how cute is that? So Windor Glass Company produces glass products and uh, has three plants. So plant one, it looks like, does aluminum frames and hardware. They're constructed in plant one. Uh, wood frames are in plant two. And then glass and construction, final construction, is done in plant three. So the idea is that we want to discontinue some old line and launch two new products. Okay, so we have three plants and two products. Product one, uh, we're going to construct an eight foot glass door that has an aluminum frame. Product two is going to be a four by six foot double hung window with wood frame. Okay. And now, <clears throat> uh, let's take a look here. If we're going to build an 8-foot glass door with an aluminum frame, you can see here that we're going to have to use uh, plant 1 to construct the aluminum frame and the hardware. And then we'll have plant 3 do the glass in construction, right? And then similarly for the double-hung window, we'll have to have plant 2 construct the wood frames and then plant 3 do the... Uh, glass and final construction. <clears throat> so we assume, right, that there's going to be a limit to how much time we can spend on each of these. And so um, let's take a look at some data that the OR team has constructed. Now, um, OR standing for Operations Research. All right, so I should also say that in our data that we're going to um, construct here, um, we're um, constructing things in batches of 20. Okay, so the numbers that you see here um, correspond to batches of 20 products each. Good. Okay, let's take a look at the data then we've got. So um, here on the side is plant 1, 2, and 3. And here uh, we have hours for product 1 per batch. And in the other column we have hours for product 2 per batch. And then we have hours available per week. <clears throat> so again, product one is the aluminum frame glass door. And so here we have, uh, this is going to take one hour in plant one and three hours in plant three. Uh, and then down at the bottom here is the profit for that batch. So we'll get $3,000 worth of profit for that. And here we have hours for product two per batch. That's going to, like we were saying before, that's going to take product or uh, plant two and plant three and two hours each for that. So overall, <clears throat> right, that's going to give us a $5,000 uh, profit. And then uh, we're told that uh, we have four hours available in plant one, 12 hours available in plant three or two, and 18 hours available in plant three. Good. So what do we want to do? <clears throat> Um, we want to figure out how much, how many windows to make, right? We need to figure out how many windows or how much of product one and how much of product two uh, to construct, right? Um, <clears throat> and so the big question here um, is how do we set this up? How to set this problem up? in order to maximize our profit. And so this is a very typical uh, style of operations research problem where we want to try to somehow uh, optimize our um, optimize something. So let's see if we can figure that out. So uh, the first question then is, what are the variables we're trying to find? So we should be thinking, what are my variables? What are the variables? By the way, these are the decision variables. Right? Uh, 
what is my optimization function? What function are we optimizing? And then finally, what is the domain? Uh, that's biz that's math speak. In business speak, we're going to say what are the constraints. I guess that's a math speak too. What are the constraints in this problem? Good. Now I've got to about ten minutes, so I'm going to stop here, and uh, we'll pick up the problem uh, from there in the next video.